Asian carp became a problem throughout the United States, at least within the Mississippi River Basin. In the late 90s, early 2000s, especially in the Illinois River. And, you know, we didn't know much about them in Kentucky. I came to Kentucky in 2009, and uh, a commercial fisherman was paddlefish fishing, and he caught uh, 4,000 pounds of bycatch, which was Asian carp. So obviously, coming from Illinois and having done a few studies on them already, I knew we had a problem. Ever since that time, we've been kind of trying to figure out how we can get mass amounts of Asian carp out of these lakes to keep them from becoming overpopulated. And it's been quite a struggle. We started to invite a commercial market through Carp Madness. We did in 2013, got a lot of media support from that, got a lot of interest in Asian carp from Kentucky and Barkley Lakes at that time. They were very, very robust fish. We created programs like the Asian Carp Harvest Program that would entice commercial fishermen to come to the lakes. We worked with Two Rivers Fisheries to start a processing plant, probably the most successful processing plant in the United States for Asian carp. That's kind of how it all started, and we've been trying to figure out ways since then to increase the amount of harvest, to increase the volume of fish coming out of here every year. The Chinese have a method of driving fish and collecting them. It uh, takes months, typically, to do it, and they use a whole lot of nets and a whole lot of time and a whole lot of people, and they end up harvesting a body of water that can be hundreds or thousands, even, of hectares, and they'll get, like, 85% of the target fish out. They're targeting primarily big head and silver carp, which is a primary staple fish over there. So what we're doing here is we've kind of modified that technique so that we can run it over days instead of months. We're using a lot of technology instead of just brute manpower. It's called the Modified Unified Method, and so far it seems to be working pretty well. So the USGS came to us, or I went to them actually, and asked them about their Modified Unified Method. They've used it successfully in some natural lakes in Illinois and Missouri, taking out hundreds of thousands of pounds in a week's time. So I asked them if they could come here and basically they agreed and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service got involved and so we created a multi-agency project to try a couple bays here this year. We started on February 3rd on another bay and we're finishing here in Pisca Bay uh, in the next couple days. Basically that system is setting out nets. Essentially we're dividing the body of water into little squares using these block nets. The nets are set first of all to block fish from leaving the cove when we start pushing them and then perpendicular nets are set to create what's called combs, where you got individual cells. We push them out of that cell and then run another block net over the opening and incrementally push them back. We just leapfrog the nets. You use sound and electricity to create narrow corridors where you can work with fish and push them out of those corridors. We have about two miles of nets that are actually here to do this with, so we end up moving a whole lot of net around. But in the end, all the fish are stuck in a really small area. Which we call our corral or our sane zone. Hello everybody, I'm Rich Dorm, the commissioner of the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. As a representative of the million sportsmen we have in the state of Kentucky, I want to say thank you to the sportsmen for what you do. Without you, we couldn't do this. It means a lot to have you all here today. This is a serious issue. And again, we're a million strong in Kentucky. With a population a little over four million, we represent a lot of people. Our fishery staff, they're super efficient. We're very impressed. We're just really excited about the direction that we're moving in. We're really doing a good job with Asian carp. Thank you all. What we're doing with this whole experiment is essentially adding tools to our toolbox. We're trying every way that we can to combat Asian carp in these lakes. When we have a problem of this magnitude, there's no one easy solution that's going to solve it. Asian carp have been out of control in these reservoirs for well over a decade now, and it's been a good decade since we saw them in numbers that started to concern us. Um, once that got identified, we started looking for solutions, and it quickly became apparent that state and federal agencies just couldn't simply come in and remove them out of the water. There's just not enough money and resources to make that happen. This whole program was an experiment because where this has been used before were natural lakes, and they didn't have a lot of substrate. And they certainly didn't have very avid fishermen putting a lot of debris in the water to make fish habitat. And so that was always my main concern about bringing it here to Kentucky. Can we clear out a spot that we can sane? I think we can. It's going to take some work. Uh, we're going to have to dedicate areas in the future that we can call saning areas or carp harvest areas.
So the way that this modified unified method works, we were able to drive and funnel fish into a takeout point very well. We use two methods to drive the fish. One is sound. We have basically underwater speakers that are lowered below the surface of the water and startle the fish and move them. The second way we move fish is with electricity. So we can use electro fishing boats to just put a low voltage electrical current in the water and use it to push those fish. One of the nice things about this is that most of our native fish don't drive like that. When we come in with the sound, they hide. And so we just go right past them and we don't end up with the bycatch. We don't end up with fish that we don't want to catch. We just end up with mostly the Asian carp. So what we end up with in the nets. The bycatch that we do see is in rough fish species like buffalo and common yellow carp that we see out here more typically. What little bycatch we have seen, it's been released unharmed. We've had very low mortality. So that's another exciting thing about using this method is that we're not harming the fish we're trying to protect by taking these Asian carp out. So right now they're giving a trial run of the fish pump. So you can see that pump turning on as they're tightening in the seine. They're bunching those fish up and pushing them closer and closer to that hose where they can pump them out and then put the fish in an even tighter live car or basically a small net pen, which we can then more easily harvest them out of. That's just another tool in the toolbox too, trying to get rid of Asian carp. It's really important that we do things like this to keep increasing the number of tools we have focused on this issue. Every time we get a new tool, we're taking out more Asian carp.